back live with our next guest. So he is an experienced computer programmer who founded and built the company Altcoin Trader. As an early adopter of Bitcoin, he says he wanted to bring cryptocurrency to the local South African community because buying cryptocurrencies from any exchanges overseas was difficult and cumbersome. So as a true entrepreneur, he pulled up his pants and he decided to build his own platform in order to make crypto available to every South African. Bringing crypto to the local South African community has always been his dream, and he's doing just that. Please put your virtual hands together for the founder and CEO of Altcoin Trader, Richard D'Souza. Welcome, my friend. Chris, thanks very much for that introduction. I really appreciate that. Good afternoon, everyone. I am super excited to be at the Bitcoin events DeFi Conference 2020. Even though the coronavirus has had a dramatic impact, it cannot stop us. We're out there. We're just doing things in a different way. And that is just absolutely exciting. I am. My goal today is to inspire and invigorate people with cryptocurrency, but with DeFi. I want to take out all the complexity and all of these presentations that you've heard and you've thought about and you've gone, wow, this is just so complicated. How can I, as an individual, get involved and actually participate in DeFi? I want to start breaking that down and start encouraging you. And if by the end of this presentation, you guys are starting to look and you guys are saying, how do I get involved? Let me just get a little bit of a, a little slice of this pie. Then I know that I will have been successful in what I meant to do. What I'm going to be covering today is a practical look at DeFi. So we're just going to go over one or two product, uh, projects just to get your feet wet, just to get you inspired and invigorated to start trying to look at these projects and taking those first baby steps. And then we are going to look at decentralization versus governance and build a bit on that. And then I just want to share some of my thoughts on decentralization on governments is uh, decentralized finance despite the name actually decentralized and what we can expect with this going into the future. Now, before we take a look at these practical examples, there's a couple of things that I want to cover. And the first thing is, is DeFi real or is it still experimental? So, I'm just getting out my presentation here. Okay, so is DeFi uh, experimental or is it real? It is absolutely real. There is no doubt that DeFi is real and it, everything that we do is of the world is no longer going to be the same way. Let's just get... Okay. DeFi is definitely not an experiment. I personally have taken a DeFi loan and used it in the real world to buy a property. Now, we're not talking about a fancy property. We're talking about a little 600,000 one-bedroom apartment in uh, a suburb nearby, near where I live. So, normal story. I went to my banker, tried to get a bond. It was extremely cumbersome, a lot of documentation, a lot of waiting. And uh, to make a long story short, even though I went through this entire process, my banker came back to me and said, Richard, affordability is not a question. However, you are overexposed. And because of the National Credit Act, we are not able to give you any credit. Now, the problem, of course, here is that a banking institution, a regulated institution, has the ability to deny you to continue trading or doing business. And that is absolutely unacceptable in the new world that we are heading into. That is unacceptable in this DeFi space that we are trying to enter. So not only is it possible to use DeFi and a wide range of things, and it is real, and people like myself are using it right now. I've got a property, it's been purchased, I have a DeFi loan, I'm taking a rent every month from that property and using that rental to pay off that DeFi loan. The next thing I want to talk about is, is DeFi sustainable? 
The reason I bring this question up is because lately, if you've been watching the crypto space, if you've been looking at things like yield farming and what guys are doing in the DeFi space, there are insane gains to be made. And these insane gains are happening all the time. People are climbing in and a lot of people are saying and likening it to a Ponzi scheme or even saying, how long is this sustainable? So just to look at that and to answer those questions, of course, this type of initial spike that we are seeing where you are able to earn in some cases 100 plus percent on your investment is not always going to be around. This can be likened to companies like Uber that when they started they were actually giving away free money, free rides and that was to gain market adoption. So similarly all these projects that are coming out they are giving away insane carrots and uh, encouraging people to get involved in ways that they can earn excessive income. And that is a, a marketing or an advertising ploy. Things are going to settle down and we are going to see that starting to diminish. But I do believe that it is sustainable in a more mature way and we will be able to earn with DeFi for the foreseeable future. Maybe not at the rate that we're experiencing now, but it will continue. It is not something that is going to go away. If we just have a quick look at what has been happening with DeFi. Now, DeFi Pulse should be your go-to site to have a look at all the different DeFi projects. It really is a wealth of information. We can also see a, a chart here where we can see that coming into this year, we were slightly under $1 billion US dollars in the DeFi space. A lot of people were excited when we were reaching the $2 billion US dollar. And then we shot through three billion and four billion. We've almost hit the five billion US dollar mark in the DeFi space. And this is what exponential growth looks like. So DeFi is definitely not going anywhere in the near future. It is not a fad. It is not a phase. It is maybe a bit like the Wild West and it is building. Now, let's get on to some practical examples. Because if you are not using DeFi, if you are not excited, if you are not involved, you are absolutely missing out. Oasis, or it is also known as MakerDAO, it was uh, Maker before it rebranded, is an amazing site where you can borrow DAI. You can stake a coin like Ethereum or, or use it as collateral and you can borrow DAI. Now, it's a very simple process. But the point I want to make here is that you can borrow DAI on this platform if you have collateral at 0% interest. Now that is mind-blowing. So let's walk through this step by step. You are able to lock up some collateral, keep that collateral, and take a loan at 0%. Then you can go on to a DeFi project like Mstable. Have a look at this. Absolutely amazing. Here I am earning 21% uh, annual percentage yield. So every year I'm getting paid 21%. This is a fluctuating rate. Um, a couple of days ago, it was at 36%. And it's been jumping between the low 20s and the mid 30s for the last month or so. So it is really an absolute no-brainer. You should be staking some Ethereum, taking out a decentralized loan at 0% interest, and staking it and getting 21 to 35% interest. If you are not doing that, what would be the reason? Maybe you're concerned about the risks in DeFi, but these contracts, this community, they are being built and they are gaining traction. Every day it is more and more solid. I don't think it is a risk that needs to be concerned, that we need to be concerned at, at this stage. Obviously put in funds that you can afford to lose put in funds that you can afford to experiment with, but it's certainly amazing the way that we can earn, we can borrow money at 0% and we can lend it out at 30%. That just absolutely blows my mind. I can see that the time's running quicker than I expected, so I'm going to skip out one or two things. Altcoin Trader is a centralized exchange. 
So we have been working in the centralized space since 2015. And decentralized exchanges, DEXs, have never really played a role, or they've sort of been very experimental and they've never taken off. But with this current explosion in DeFi, we are seeing that it is a no-brainer. We have to make a way for our clients to easily transition from a centralized exchange to a decentralized exchange. So Uniswap, arguably the biggest and the easiest decentralized exchange to use, now has a central uh, a a stable coin, which is XR, which is a South African stable coin, which allows users to transition from the altcoin trader centralized exchange onto a decentralized platform where they can move between central and decentralized exchanges uh, at a moment's notice and just by simply using this token. Of course, you can use any token to move between the two exchanges, but if, you, if you're moving between uh, the exchanges with XR, you have a very clear idea of the value of the money and what you're dealing with because it is in the native South African currency, that being the RAND. Now, let's take a look at decentralized uh, versus governance. So a lot of people have said, is decentralized? DeFi is not decentralized. There's a lot of projects and there are a lot of people competing to ensure that they can have their platform and have their business model out in the DeFi space. So it is not decentralized, despite what the name implies. However, it is certainly to be considered an alternative financial system. And we are very, very early to this party. What we can expect to see is going to absolutely change the face of finance. It is going to change the face of how we trade, how we do commerce on this planet. And I can't emphasize enough what we are going to see with decentralized finance. Already, banks, if they don't adapt, are going to find themselves on a path to uh, extension because People like myself, and I'm sure that there are millions out there that have decided that if they can't get a bond, if they can't continue to do business via the traditional financial systems, we will look for alternatives and we will find alternatives that work. And decentralized finance, even though it's at the beginnings, it's at the start, it does work. And you are able with very little understanding to take out loans and to start exercising and doing business with those loans. Now, a lot of people have turned around and said, okay, guys, but who's regulating the space? Who is actually controlling it? And how do we stop like rogues from entering the space and just creating platforms that, you know, take money? Or how do you protect from money laundering? How do you protect from terrorism? How do you protect from all the common threats? And I just want to look at this from a different angle. If we have to, and I'm going to use an analogy of, the government, more specifically, presidents. And I'm not singling out any president. I'm just talking about presidents in general. Whatever country you're in, if you take a look at your president and then you take a look at the millions of people in the country, do you honestly believe that that president is the best person for the job? Considering the millions and millions of people out there, if your answer is no, he's probably not the best for the job, then it is clear that our current system is flawed. So what would be the next step to consider is, are there consequences if the president or the government or the regulators and the ruling party at the time make bad decisions? And I'd like to say there are not many consequences. In fact, poor decisions are made all the time. Now, if you are building a decentralized platform, and you are trying to compete against many, many other people building platforms like this. A couple of things I can assure you of. If you are not at the very top or the best at your game, you are not going to have the position. You are not going to have the privilege of building a decentralized project that the community consider worthy. If you make bad decisions, the consequences are swift and direct, unlike the traditional system. So if you make a bad decision 
as a D5 builder, you can lose millions of uh, dollars or rands of people's money and the responsibility is huge. If you make a bad decision that doesn't result in the loss of money, you will swiftly and very quickly be thrown out of the community and your project will be left on a pile to die with the many, many decentralized uh, finance projects that are just not worthy. So to answer that question, who is regulating this? Who is making, making sure that this, that scams, that bad things are not able to happen in the platforms? My answer is, it is the wisdom of the crowd. It is the community. It is the human race as a whole that is looking at decentralized finance and either approving or rejecting it. Sure, we're going to have scams. Sure, we're going to have problems. But ultimately, we are going to have a financial system that is built with consequences and with accountability, and it is going to be unlike anything else we have seen. It is super, super exciting what is taking place in the space. There are so many opportunities, and these opportunities are only going to increase over time. The old way of doing things, it is no more. DeFi is amazing. It is super exciting. It is here to stay, and these are the things that accountants are going to be taught. These are the things that the new generation is going to adopt and simply use. It is so exciting to me. Um, guys, I make a YouTube video once a week really because I'm passionate about this topic. So if you want to look, get a hold of me and find out other ways to earn with this DeFi or just be on the cutting edge of what is happening on the DeFi space, make sure that you look at that YouTube channel. Um, you'll find me on uh, YouTube if you just search Richard D'Souza or Rads Act. So I think there's only three minutes left. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it short there, but I'm going to uh, be take a couple of questions. I'm looking at the Q&A section right now. With three sec uh, minutes left, I see that there is no questions. So I'm in the clear for now. I don't think so. If you do want to put a question, make sure you do it now. I think there is, there is a question. Um, and it's, um, do you know of any DeFi projects running in Africa? So <laughs> that's a... a, a a question that gives me an opportunity to punt uh, XR. XR is a stable coin, which is not really a DeFi project, but it is certainly a project that allows people to, to move in and out of the international ones. I think that, so the short answer is no, I don't know of any specific DeFi projects that are running in Africa, but the beauty of DeFi, and I think what mm -hmm. is pertinent here is that uh, DeFi cryptocurrency as a whole is a location agnostic. So in other words, it is absolutely irrelevant where these projects are running from. They can be accessed by South Africans, by people in Africa, and we can use them to our full benefit. So it would be great if there were uh, more projects in Africa, but that doesn't take away from the ability for us to be able to use these amazing new projects. Absolutely, absolutely. Um DeFi basic income projects and the stone that just mentioned that what uh, what's the steps to run a DeFi project in Africa? Okay, so you know DeFi because it is open, the, it is permissionless. So maybe that question has been asked in an incorrect way. The step there is no permission needed. You can go and start a DeFi project right now this afternoon. Yeah. What it would entail is obviously you would have to have the knowledge. You would have to have a clear plan and a vision of what you want to bring to the community, how you want to serve the DeFi community. If you have a plan, if you have a vision and you can start implementing the project, that would be the steps. The beautiful and amazing thing about this space is that you don't have to ask anybody. The community will judge it. The DeFi space will either uh, boost this project or it will leave it as a project that is not worthy. So it allows people of all walks of life with the knowledge and the vision and the passion to just simply get started. Absolutely. Um, so just to, just to finish off there, uh, Richard, I see your Anna Stone has mentioned that Gold Dollar Org is about to launch in Africa, which is, which is a punt there. But it also, is a, I think what you've just mentioned is a bit of a, an opportunity to be able to collaborate, um, especially if there's no projects running. 
I think there's a lot of people that's got some back-end experience or front-end experience to be able to, to just get a community together so that people can collaborate. But can I just end off with this? Um, as Africa, and, and, if I, and, I've, and I follow your channel quite a bit, and I think it's fantastic. Guys, if you haven't uh, sort of registered to reach the channel, it's, it's really short, it's informative, and it's to the point, which I love. Uh, the thing that I find uh, a bit of a challenge at this moment in time, in Africa, we have a problem with, let's say, middle to lower class, and we're looking at liquidity, and we're looking at everybody's complaining about the gas price at this moment in time. I mean, that's something that, what, what is your opinion about that? Uh, that's that's a very good point, Theo. Um, gas prices at this stage are astronomical, and I've actually have to I've had to say on some of my videos, guys, if you're investing smaller amounts, it's almost not worth it because yeah. uh, it takes so long for you to get your fees back. But I think that that is a temporary problem, and it is something that is going to pass as as DeFi evolves. You know, with Ethereum uh, 2.0 coming on, um, unfortunately, you know, nothing nothing starts out perfectly, but. Um, Collaboration in Africa is certainly happening. I know that I'm speaking two or three times a week on Zoom conferences and on a lot of chats, and there are a lot of groups out there that are actually looking at DeFi. They're looking at different aspects of crypto. So it's really just a question of, of getting involved in these groups and actually attending. Um, I know the Crypto School is one of the, the videos that I did on my channel. They have me on uh, at least twice a month to discuss DeFi. So there is a lot of collaboration happening and I'd urge anyone out there that is feeling sort of left out in the cold that there is a good um, African participation in the space and there's a lot of people that are extremely enthusiastic. But try not to just, um, you know, stick to borders. There's an international community that is amazing and yeah. of course this type of interaction is uh, location agnostic and you can just simply get involved. Totally, totally. Thank you, Richard, for that. Appreciate it. Fantastic information there. Um, and hopefully you'll hang around a little bit later in the lounge area or a little bit afterwards for a networking session. I know you guys has got a booth up as well. So if anybody's got any questions or anything to add, I know there's a few guys um, from Alcoin Trader in the booth as well. But again, thank you, Richard. And uh, we'll go on to the next session. Thanks very much, Theo. I really appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Bye.